Meantime, for the Marines at Contienne, the months ahead look grimmer than ever. The fall monsoon rains have just begun. They will go on till February, hampering American air power, depriving the men on the ground of at least some of the air support they desperately need. The artillery duel at Contienne will go on and on. This battle is different from any other action in the war in that there is no let-up. Day after unchanging day, as long as the North Vietnamese can resupply their troops and guns, as long as they can send down reinforcements, there is little the Marines can do about it. I mentioned a little earlier that we might consider the Boer War uh, as a period of uh, British imperial history that um, the country in the 21st century doesn't take so much pride of. Um, let's consider an event in the 20th century which might be considered to have a similar status with regards to the United States and the Vietnam War. Um, much has been written about the Vietnam War, the um, potential adventurism of America in Southeast Asia, the importance of maintaining treaty obligations to states overseas, the loss of human life, the commitment to um, the army um, going out and how those veterans were treated when they came back to the United States um, has been a course of uh, in, in American history, along with an overlapping with Watergate um, the failure in the Vietnam War seems to have had a profound effect on America's view on the 1970s um, and is something that uh, has been written about a great deal. Again, the book that I'm sort of referencing today, Underexposed, does make um, quite a lot of uh, reference to war and images which were suppressed. I want to go slightly the, the, the different way, uh, or a different way, and talk about some of the war photography of Don McCullen. Now, a highly respected British photojournalist who documented the war through his camera, and many wars through his camera over the years. And um, if you go to the British Victorian Albert Museum website, one of his images uh, is portrayed um, amongst their list of photographs of the 20th century. Um, you can pick it up here. It's of um, possibly his most famous Vietnam War photo, uh, the, the shell-shocked soldier. This rendition is a little bit darker. There are other prints or representations you'll see where the soldier's eyes can be seen. This is 1968. This is following an intense period of battle, a man holding his gun, um, sullen looking, um, a thousand mile stare, although as I said from this representation it's a little bit difficult to pick up on. So the V&A are going to pick out this portrait. Um, it's not posed per se, it's a photograph from the time, it's the aftermath. Now this is uh, these are images which were available to contemporaries in the late 1960s. And it's not putting forward an image of success. Um, if you consider the post-First World War period, and even during the 1914 to 1918 period, there was a lack of understanding for those people who had shell shock, what we might describe now as post-traumatic stress disorder. So over a century, we have a situation where there is greater willingness to accept the nature of war and the aftermath it's going to have on the lives that are combatants. And over that century, we can start seeing that the representations in the media make that experience more open and also um, confront those readers who are at home. So I think in, in this case, that although the image is a classic one, and I'm, I'm trying to very much bring up um, the photographs that uh, have been widely referenced, it is something that you need to just take a pause and think about. This is 1968. You would have seen nothing similar to this in 1918 to represent the experience of soldiers after um, the uh, Western Front in the First World War. Now, um, if we look at uh, some of other some or some 
other of McCullough's, uh, McCullough's photographs. Um, this is a website, it's Contact Press Images. Um, they are copywritten images, and let me just see if I can actually bring this up to a larger size. Again, uh, the nature of image is important. Here we have um, Vietnamese civilians running away from a firefight, and you have immediately next to them um, American uh, servicemen in pursuit of their jobs, etc. Um, at rest, but in a confrontational uh, environment. Atmospheric, I think, is a good way of actually thinking about um, the way you might consider this photograph. Again, men doing their job. But this is 1968. Uh, they're still black and white photographs. Uh, they are literally grainy, as well as showing the grit of war. And I think this is something that um, you might want to consider, as we mentioned in the first seminar, how important it is that you are seeing images which have an authenticity about them. And for some you know, reason that we're going to discuss later, black and white photographs do cover that to a certain degree. So let me just flip through a couple more of these images quickly. Here um, we have triage of uh, a, a, a wounded soldier. Here, just to see what the snipers are like, um, we have uh, an American soldier putting his helmet on the gun and putting it above the parapet of the wall. So he's getting a feeling of exactly how safe or dangerous the environment is. Again, another portrait of a, a soldier, sullen, dirty, in the midst of conflict. Again, we'll skip over this one, but again, another ensemble. Men together working to a common purpose. But I'd just like you to, to think about this particular image and to go back to this site and review all of them and consider your reactions to them. Here we have a bystander, um, someone who has been very directly involved with the conflict, um, but someone who is not obviously a combatant, covered in blood, uh, cradling what we assume to be his daughter, looking disconsolate, um, looking demoralised. But also what we have, the daughter who's actually made eye contact with the camera itself. And um, there's a mix there of being distraught, but also slight curiosity. What is this being pointed in to, to me? So while it's only on a very limited scale, it's bringing across slightly the curiosity, the, the um, willingness to learn from the child, even though it's an environment which is bloody in every sense.